I have something very special for you today. Something that I didn't think would ever happen for, for me and this channel, because it is, it is the same thing that inspired me to make content back in 2017. I was joined by the creative director of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, Chris Joppa Perkins, to do a little bit of exploration, a little bit of a guided tour of Terminus. Now, this actually took place over about almost two hours, so I'm not going to put that in a single video. We'll leave the video with all of all the times that I got Joppa killed for, for later. This video is all about the the philosophy of Pantheon, the showing off some of the zones of Pantheon, like what what is Mad Run and getting to look a little bit inside what it looks like and how freaking creepy it is. And, and what was the, the design philosophy behind the zone? What was the point that they were trying to get across? And what does that say about the upcoming zones for Pantheon that will be releasing with the next couple seasons like season three? Oh, so where would you so go? Great. Like wh if you were like go leading an expedition, where would you go out from this, from this and back and you'd, run, you'd, you'd leave. <laughs> run, you'd to run, to, run back to Demeth and go cry yeah. in a corner? <laughs> um, <laughs> Join me as we look at just how dangerous the game can be and what to expect from Pantheon going forward with Chris Joppa Perkins. So we've got just behind us some of the spiders and these are all new, correct? Yes, this is the very fringe of the new uh, part of Avengers Pass we've just opened up, Mad Run. And these spiders are uh, some of the nastiest creatures that we have you know, currently in game. So Shit. just know if you do get aggro, you will, oh. you will die. Yeah. Wait, how Oh, did I have aggro on the spider? Oh, yeah, I did. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, you, uh, what is you this? You a little psycho shock there. Yeah. And they sh they sent a mind control human at me? Mm-hmm. Is that part of... So in the, uh, the season two, um, like, announcement, there is some hints about some uh, abilities. Is it like... Uh, was it swarm and minion abilities? Correct. Is that what we just experienced or what I just that is, experienced? That is what you just experienced. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And those those in particular uh, are really nasty because they're mind controlled. And have you ever heard of or played a game called Prey? I've heard of it. I have not played it, but yes, I've seen it too. I'm talking about the 2017 Prey, the, uh, mm -hmm. the one that was un unfortunately named and kind of uh, plagued by obscurity mm -hmm. and it's it's again one of my top probably my top five favorite games ever um so so good uh but anyway there's there is something very similar in that game <clears throat> where um i can't even remember now what the the creatures are called but they they can mind control um people and then they basically send them running at you as these kind of living bombs and they they get in you know close to you and they blow up and that's how they deal damage to you and that's what these mind controlled humans do they have an ability called shatter self which oh okay uh, just blows them up and they deal ae splash damage to everything within radius and so it's part of the beautiful chaos of mad run um there's other spiders that summon you know several little small spider spider hatchlings at once as part of their swarm Mm -hmm. um, ability and if you get one of those and you get a nightingale and you get a shriek and a widower and you get all these different spider types on you at once it it turns into just beautiful chaos um and a lot of really interesting new mechanics that we haven't had on npcs before uh so it's been really fun seeing groups go through there and struggle and <laughs> not really know what happened to them and then you know kind of slowly piece it together it's been really great yeah and i, I believe there is a, a hint in the thing about a skill to use uh to kind of yes. try and deal with it as well yes there is a there is a type of poison that some of these spiders have that's actually not poison based it's, it's a venom that's not poison based as far as like poison damage mm -hmm. so your poison resistance or your poison cures don't actually have any effect it's actually a magical magically based venom and so you have to actually have a magical dispel to to remove it mm -hmm. and right now enchanters um, are the only ones who have that clerics will also get that ability at that higher level uh, but for most of the players who are coming in at level 
for the content in Mad Run, the Enchanter will be the best way to, to deal with that poison. One of the things I wanted to, since we're talking about the classes and, and everything like that, is we've been doing this. You're you're a cleric and I'm a wizard. And we, I mean, we, we have died a lot, <laughs> to be fair. Oh, we've died a lot, yes. <laughs> but we've also been able to kill things, you know, and, and we've been able, this is like, I would, I would never have thought a cleric plus a, a DPS caster would really be able to do anything. And I think that that's something that's been talked about a couple of different times. It's like the non traditional group setting that maybe it's not the most optimized, right? But still uh, viable. And I've experienced that with groups that had no tank um, and loaded up on DPS and actually had two healers. And again, it, you know, it was a little bit less safe, <laughs> but it worked and we were able to, to make progress and things like that. Is that is that something that is that you consider when you're you're thinking about class balancing like you mentioned that enchanters will have this but clerics will have it later but uh is that something you consider with class balancing of not just thinking like okay this area to be successful you need these five classes but also like yeah people can still do things if they're not optimal yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it it's a it's a quaternity based approach to group gameplay but that does not mean that the quaternity is required um it just means that that there is kind of this core group makeup mm. in mind of your traditional tank healer damage dealer but then also crowd control and in mad run it's one of the first places where we've really tried to ramp up and push forward that uh, kind of how pantheon is going to um cause players to need to consider leaning into crowd control not just as an afterthought but as a primary role that needs to be considered and uh we've we've not really reached that level of requirement for crowd control um i mean not I mean, there's been helner cave i think was a great example of where it was really really needed and there's some other areas that players might argue but we we've, we've tried to really pursue that here with the way we've handled population, um, the placement of NPCs, uh, to, to the point where players have even come back and said, hey, have you guys started leashing, or uh, <laughs> um, not leashing, uh, linking mobs, where mm -hmm. if you pull one, you're, you're absolutely guaranteed to get these other ones. And, and no, that's not the case. It's just that there, there is a density now in an approach to placement of NPCs that is requiring um, I've turned our aggro off, by the way, because I'm. I kind of figured I was still alive. <laughs> yeah, move through here, but uh, yeah, it, it's 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 a really cool byproduct and something that we're we are absolutely embracing is kind of the non-traditional group makeup and uh, players finding ways to make it work. That's I think like one of the things that I've missed in a lot of games over the years was the. The move from the quaternity to the the trinity right the 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 losing of the support uh cc class and and mm -hmm. it's it's lack of prominence which i think has often led to kind of what i consider like the the arpg ification of mmos you know like you gather up everything you kill it all and you just keep going that way until you reach a boss and then the boss has um a, like things that you need to avoid like there, it plays a lot of modern modes play a lot more like that, like a Diablo than um, an RPG in a lot of ways, which I like the. Oh, what is this? The Witch of the Wood. You must be quite mad to linger in these mists. Perhaps one thing we have in common, Traveler. I'll see you soon. Oh, that's creepy. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that the ARPG ification of MMOs is uh, is an interesting way to put it. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I want to show you the um, the entrance and maybe let you kind of peer a little bit inside. I'm okay. I'm I'm. I don't want to take this too far, but I think it'd be cool just okay. under the, the circumstances of our, yeah. of our time here to kind of give you a little little peek of that. Because yeah, I, I have not made it nearly this far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, I love these little, are these like little holes for spiders? These are so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little dens. Did I lose you? There you are. There. Endurance back up here. I love the, one of the things I've noticed in this game is the, the verticality. Uh, I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but basically there are areas not necessarily just like climbing, right, but just areas where you can look down and see things. Um, and I just noticed that here where I we were up on a hill and I could see down, I could see little spiders moving about underneath and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the things I noticed really in, in Avengers past uh, back in season one when it first opened up because it felt in a lot of ways different from from King's Reach because of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, it was more deeper. You mean deeper. Throne Fast? Oh, yeah, Throne, throne Fast. Yeah, I, I intermix King's Reach and Throne Fast. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah, these? yeah. No, I, I know what you mean, though. Yeah. For sure. It's like stairs. They're like stairs. Those are stairs, actually, yes. This whole area is just so creepy. It's fantastic. And then like the, the sounds of the trees. Mm hmm. Yeah, audio is doing some super heavy lifting in this area. It's yeah. fantastic. Well, and the haze too. the, the, the lighting haze is. Oh, OK. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I tried to take a little bit of a roundabout way getting here so that you would uh, not be able to remember how you did it. That's it. Yeah. No, I, I have I have no idea where I am. <laughs> so. Good, good, good. This is cool. Oh, my gosh. This is. Oh, wow. OK. This is so creepy. And now we need our torch. There are a lot right here. Mm, yeah, this room. <laughs> it's good. This is, is infamous. Yeah, like this. Is, this would be a death room. Yep. Yeah, it, it's it's super super challenging. There's actually a couple places where we created these intentional choke points to say like, hey, hey, if you're gonna come in here, you you got to be able to handle this. Yeah, you got to be ready. <laughs> yeah, then, you know. Yeah. Oh, so where would you so go? Great. Like, wh if you were I go? leading an expedition, where would you go? Out from this, from this and back and you'd, run. You'd, you'd leave. <laughs> run, you'd to leave. run to Run back to Demeth and go cry yeah. in a corner. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like. I mean, this looks. This the right looks really cool. It's so not, we're not going to go any deeper than this. But okay, the the goal of this place was to create as much of a claustrophobic yeah. um, kind of swarming din of spider hood as, yeah. as we, as we could. I mean, obviously we could make it even tighter, even more claustrophobic, but yeah. we tried to strike a good balance of, you know, there being room for a full group, multiple groups, even uh, being able to move through here and um, needed room for the spiders with the size we wanted them to be to kind of move in and around, but I, th I think we've we've landed on a really nice mix of that kind of claustrophobic yeah. height. Uh, just don't really feel super comfortable being in here. And um, it, I, I guess, one of the very I wouldn't call it a distant inspiration, but wanted it to invoke some of the same feelings that you would get in like something like a guck mm -hmm. or um, some of the lower tunnels of Kazakh Thule when you were down there doing the alligators, um, where that that one wrong pull. I mean, if you imagine once the death penalty is back in place and you're, you know, you're in here trying to make your way and that one wrong pool and that sense of like, how do I get out of here? Like the liminal space of like these tight, like holes in the wall and corridors that I can't remember if I ran down this one or haven't gone down it yet. It, it's, uh, it has well, this really nice vibe to it. Um, yeah, I just got confused. I was like, wait, what is that the way out? <laughs> yeah, I just that. Yeah. It, as you were saying that I was I was quite literally thinking because I, I've been just looking down the hallways here. And I, I definitely, if, if it's a sense of danger, I think is, which you, you get in Guck as well. And I think that came across. And I love this lighting and how it's, it's got like, it's got like a good mix, I think. The lighting yeah. here. 
This is really good. I like I I hadn't seen this yet, and this is I'd seen the screenshots and a little bit of the video, but this is amazing. And terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you going through going through the spider webs too. Yeah. Yeah. And the plan actually for, for webbing like that is that there would be a little bit of a slowdown factor when you run mm -hmm. run through the webs as well. So they'll feel more like a true part of the environment. I like that. That's not yeah. A, not just a visual. Yeah. Yeah. Not not too much. Like like just just enough yeah. to be kind of a little bit noticeable, but yeah. Oh wow. I Is this wait? Is this haze always here? It is. Just adds such a creepy vibe to it. And the trees and everything. Yeah, I think this area turned out really, really well. It really did. Like, and it feels full. Um, it's not probably not the best way to put it, but it feels full. Like it feels. Like an like an MMO area to go and level and and mm -hmm. and die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it, I think it does a good job of of driving home the fact that you know we've seen Throne Fast for a really long time. Mm -hmm. We've seen now Avengers Pass, and even though it's different in many ways, it is still a continuation of that Throne Fast. Yeah, that Throne Fast in biome, and so another one of our goals here and there's there's still you know some cool things that we want to do overall not only for an area like this but in other areas that are similar in, in vibe but getting mad run online getting hangor online as our mm -hmm. first like extreme climate area super cold frigid having those two places in play i think is going to really send the right notes of like mm -hmm. you know it's not all going to look like Throne Fest. <laughs> it's not all going to look like AVP. You know, there's going to yeah. be some crazy departures. And and these, even with how great they feel and how unique they kind of are already, they're still on the milder end of some of the degree of departure that we have planned for okay. certain areas. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's been, it's been really good to get this. I think it's been a really good, uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback from, from yeah. testers on that kind of how it, it really does hit that nice note of showing uh, some of that differentiation. I want to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take us over here. We're not going to engage with anything, but I just want to okay. take us over to this part of AVP that's going to be opening up a little bit later. Okay. Just as a reminder to, um, to players of uh, the, um, I think it'll just, I think it'll make sense once I bring you over here. Okay. Um, there we go. But one of the one of the things I love about this part of AVP, and this is this is over where the area that we call the marbles, and this is mm -hmm. kind of on the other side of the dragon shrine little mountain plateau. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 the openness, and yeah, one of the things that I think players, you know, there's a lot of verticality in Throne Fast, lots of cliffs, lots of cliff faces. Um, but this is kind of that first moment when you come out of the, the dense tree cover, you come into this large open kind of area um, of kind of heralding what we're going to be starting to move into when we move into Silent Plains, which is going to be a massive open, you know, kind of plain area with very little tree cover um, and very little breakup of what is going to be just a lot of rolling plain. Um, and, you know, I, th I think there's... I think it's just important to to remind players of that that you know this, this it's not all this kind of plateau driven um, environment. Thrown fast very much is AVP yeah. largely very much is. We're actually going to be changing the uh, the silhouette, if you will, or kind of the the shape of that highest plateau in front of us there um, to make it a, l a little bit less boxy. Okay, uh, because that's actually a really significant plateau directly in front of us. Um, there's there's something that you'll be able to see actually even from this distance up there on the very edge as it kind of sticks out over um the uh the little pathway up there into silent plains but um other than that th th it's it's a it's just great like I, I love this area i love coming yeah through these trees coming into here and just feeling that sense of like ah oh, yes like 
wide open <laughs> space, lots of negative <laughs> space that isn't filled with trees or or rocks or, you know, things like that. So it's especially stark coming from where we just were too, mm -hmm. with all the spiders and everything like that. So I'm glad we went there first and then yeah. here so you can kind of see because I, I think that that biodiversity, the that that drastic change is is huge for an MMO world to make it feel so, so crazy different. Um, oh, I got scared. There's a bear. <laughs> I think I think I'm like just ruined with bears. <laughs> so, They're uh, it's understandable. They're... I mean, it did growl at me. So there is that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah this is great. And now, now I'm instantly intrigued like about the marbles too, you know. Yeah, well, go on being intrigued because they <laughs> they too are significant in their own right, mm -hmm. and um, something I'm excited for players to kind of slowly unravel as well. It's gonna be t I mean, it's just gonna be tons of things like that. Yeah, things that are just like like you did with the stairs. Like, what was that? Are those stairs? Yeah, yeah, they're stairs. Why are they there? <laughs> exactly. That's, I don't know. That, that is what I was thinking. Yeah, I was like, why are these yep. stairs here? And like I love the draw distance on this the the mountain face that that big plateau up there, because it just like it, it inspires majesty, which is just really cool in a novel because it makes you feel small in the world. Yes, so important. Yeah, agreed. One hundred percent. Very important to feel small. Um, this next area, I'm just kind of just popping us around a little bit okay. here. To... I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah. Well, this area isn't quite as like uh, scandalous because you know the, the normal players can mm -hmm. um, can can come over here as well. But we're starting to transition here into some more of these um, cedar trees, and yeah, this is just a reminder of you know right now it doesn't doesn't look like it, but this is going to be where we're going to start transitioning into uh, Hangor and that frigid kind of seeing seeing our first transition from. The AVP environment, the thrown fast AVP biome into that frigid, um, that frigid, cold, snow covered, yeah. actively snowing, snow covered trees, like that whole, that whole thing. So, man, I'm so excited about, about Hangar. There's, for some reason, it's one of the things that I'm really, I'm just most excited about right now. Yeah. It just, it, it means so much uh, to have an area that really genuinely feels like you've gone way up into like a frigid northern region and you're battling the elements. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, you know, different wildlife, you know, I mean, some of the same types of things. You're going to see bears and wolves and some of those various things, but you're going to see some new things as well. But they're all in that kind of like white fur and, and you yeah. know, that frigid kind of biome feel everywhere the audio you know knowing what pvl is planning to do with the audio and <laughs> how things sound different when there's snow on the ground you know that it yeah it just oh that's a bunch of the footsteps and the the kind of that eerie silence the the drums of the orcs like there, there's just so many cool things coming with that that area um i'm just super super excited about it it sounds it sounds like just so cool and i think that's like one of the things that I've been like, I've been since season started, I started watching the calendar and thinking, OK, this is the point where this is going to open up and this is the point where this is going to open up. And I'm excited to do it and excited to go see this 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 new area or, or experience new things. And in a, in a weird way, uh, because I, I mean, content creation and, and working and everything is it's it's busy. So there's not much time to do anything. So I haven't really had a a comfy MMO in a while. Um, I go mm -hmm. back to EverQuest every now and then and I log in, I use my lesson, <laughs> do some quests, whatever. Um, and but then like lately, that's been Pantheon because I've been logging in, getting to just, you know, I it's it has that feel to it already for me. But then there's just there's so much more I want to see. And I also know like as soon as things are done i'm gonna i'm gonna be stuck in like a I'm, I'm long long sessions to level up to see more because i'm already like sitting here like dang i wish i was high enough level to get groups and go kill the spiders and stuff like that and mm -hmm. there's like there's anticipation and excitement for for what's to come and and it's just i'm just, <laughs> just excited good yeah 
Good. That's that's how we want people to feel. Mm -hmm. And I think seasons, the seasons approach. I mean, absolutely. So glad that we're doing it. We should have done it sooner. <laughs> um, but it, it's yeah, it's that forward lean of you know what's coming, and I think that's given the community, the the current community, prospective community. It, it's given everyone a sense of like, okay, we can we can finally kind of feel some some ground underneath our feet when it comes to pain. Yeah. There's something consistent. There's something solid and load bearing here that mm -hmm. I can actually start to kind of get get a handle on and, and, and invest in a little bit. And I mean, mm -hmm. invest like that, the, the time, the attention, the, yeah. the, the, what game are you going to choose to spend your time? And it's been really, really cool and really heartening to see so many new people streaming the game and, and hear that kind of talk. Like, yeah, uh, that that it's you can tell that they're doing more than testing. They're they're really getting locked into playing the game as their kind of their game of choice or mm -hmm. one of their games that they're really wanting to spend time in. So it's been huge, and all of it just serves to kind of re-energize the cycle. Let's get next season out. Let's get the next season out. Let's yeah. make sure that no matter what, we hit those beats and keep things moving. It's the the start of the realization of. The, like the for like I'll speak from my perspective the start of the realization of the promise that I saw when I was just finishing up my master, master's degree I was tired I didn't want to raid never quest and I sat down and I watched the stream with co carnage streaming Pantheon rise of the fallen and I was like damn that looks like a lot of fun and the, the it's it's that feeling and feeling on the cusp of the, the gameplay loop being like it's like sl slowly going into it and the world growing around you and it feels like and, and this is this isn't just me like saying shit like this is my honest feeling it feels like the cusp of something very special and like i'm i'm i've been excited to be a part of it for the the ups and downs over the last couple of years but this like just sitting here right now and looking here at what will be hang on I, I can see that mountain in the distance and i want to go there i can see the cold on that those uh that peak right there and it makes me want to go there and see what's there you know and it feels so big and epic right here in this little view right here like this looks like a postcard uh you know <laughs> mm. and like seeing all this come together it's 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 awesome you know yeah man it is it really is and just to wrap that up i have to i have to say and if you're still watching this thank you for for lasting this long but this really is it's a surreal moment for me because when I started getting into content creation, I watched Co Carnage. I watched Co Carnage play The Last of Us on here on YouTube. I didn't even know Twitch existed. And then I watched some Twitch. And then I watched a Co Carnage stream, a guided dev playthrough, where he he went through with the devs, with Ardoon, with Joppa, to, to play some Pantheon. And I thought, damn, that was so cool. That was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. And it made me really just want to do that. So I can trace my want and, and, and need to create content to that moment and, and to, to be able to do it now, to do that thing that inspired me. Uh, I, I am beyond like, like emotional about it and, and I'm just so appreciative of the opportunity and i owe that opportunity to all of you everyone that has watched anything i've ever done anyone that's shared anything i've ever done commented liked subscribed whatever it's i'm just thankful for this it's it's hard to put into words so i'll just say that it's surreal and i feel very very lucky my name is red Room flynn thank you so so much for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day